Against All Odds. It is the title of this life-size bronze work by sculptor Edwin Baguki of two race horses locked in a battle to the finish in the world's first million-dollar thoroughbred race, the 1981 Budweiser Arlington Million. The work overlooks the paddock of the new Arlington International Race Course outside Chicago and for all time immortalizes one of the sport of King's most unlikely heroes. This is the story of the thoroughbred racehorse that beat all the odds. This is the saga of John Henry. And hello again, everyone. I'm Chris Lincoln with the story of an American sports legend, a thoroughbred racehorse named John Henry. His name fit perfectly. A blue-collar horse, not a blue blood. Actually, not even a horse. A gelding, castrated at an early age because of his mean disposition around the barn. He was small for a thoroughbred, standing just over 15 hands and weighing only about 1,000 pounds. He had second-class breeding and third-class confirmation. His father was old Bob Bowers, described as a mean-spirited horse of very little ability on the racetrack, eventually sold for $900 as a stallion. But before he ended his days on a farm in Michigan, he was matched with the mare once double, a nondescript producer. From that mating by breeder Verna Lehman of Golden Chance Farm in Paris, Kentucky, now, by the way, a pig farm, would come this fall in March of 1975. He wasn't much to be proud of, straight in the knees, nearly back at the joint. It was predicted by the attending veterinarian that the new fall, in fact, had a better chance of breaking down than he ever did of racing. This was the first person, but certainly not the last, that gave John Henry no chance. What this fall became, no one could have foreseen. Against all odds, he became a racing legend. Now driving up between horses and gaining is John Henry coming at the leaders, coming to the wire. John Henry on the outside, turn of coin on the inside. John Henry, like a bullet. John Henry now taking command. Boyle Heroin, Babylon, Nereo in second. Dijinsky, secret is third. But here he is, a living legend, John Henry. And down the stretch they come. The old man, John Henry, takes command. He raced from the spring of 1977 through the fall of 1984, from age two through age nine. He ran at 19 different tracks, from coast to coast and around the world. 83 times John Henry went to the post, and when his career ended, he was the richest money-earning racehorse in the history of the world. The first to win three million, four million, five million, and then six million. His career record showed 39 wins, 15 seconds, and 9 thirds. Total money earned, $6,597,947. This thoroughbred, who won more than $6 million, was purchased by John Calloway at the Keeneland January 1976 mixed sales for just $1,100. He sold him a year later for $2,200 to Harold Snowden, Jr., who gelded the mean-acting cult. And after having one sale voided by a veterinarian, he sold John Henry to Colleen Maderi, Dorothy Lingo, and her son John for $7,500. John Henry was shipped to Little Jefferson Downs in Kenner, Louisiana, where on May 20th, 1977, he made his first start in a two-year-old maiden race at four furlongs for a purse of $2,000. John Henry won it by a nose and earned his first paycheck, $1,200. In September of that year, John Henry would win his first stakes race, the $86,450 Lafayette Futurity by a head at Evangeline Downs over a sloppy racetrack. The historic New Orleans Fairgrounds, America's third oldest racetrack, was John Henry's next stop, but he never won a race there in nine starts including two $25,000 claiming races. Again, it seemed no one wanted the gelding. The Louisiana owners were looking for a trade after his losing string at the fairgrounds. And for the third time, Harold Snowden would end up with John Henry. This time in a swap for a cult named Pay the Way and a filly called Separation Gap. It was in the spring of 1978 that Sam and Dorothy Rubin of New York, New York would enter the John Henry saga. A lifelong gambler, Sam may have known how to bet on horses, but he didn't know much else about them when he purchased his very first racehorse, John Henry, 
for $25,000, sight unseen. No, I bought the horse, and one of my friends heard that, Sam, I heard you bought a horse the other day. I said, yeah, I bought a horse. He said, well, what'd you buy? I said, I bought a horse. He says, stupid, what kind of horse? So I says, you know, I don't know. So I don't think 15 minutes later, Jimmy Ferrara's around, I say, Jimmy, I says, what did I buy? He says, you bought a gelding. I says, what color is that? True story. After earning $49,380 as the unwanted two-year-old, John Henry would prove quite a bargain indeed for Sam Rubin. The return on his $25,000 investment by the end of John's three-year-old racing season in 1978 was more than $120,000. Then some friends told Sam the grass and the dollars were much greener in California for a turf horse. But before Ron McAnally became his trainer, Sam first tried to give him to Hall of Fame trainer Charlie Whittingham. Well, Charlie turned Reuben down and then watched over the next six years as his horses ran second to John Henry 19 different times. Well, I've always said uh, he beat me in so many big races that... Uh... It finally got where he said, well, you th when do you think you'll beat him? I said, all I'm trying to do is outlive him. There were many similarities between John Henry and his new California trainer, Ron McAnally. Neither were blue bloods, neither were wanted in their use. McAnally raised in an orphanage in Kentucky. Both overcame long odds and would eventually become champions and reach racing's coach. hall of fame together. But both coach. needed each other to get there. McAnally, his longtime assistant trainer, Eduardo Inda, Groom Jose Mercado and exercise rider Louis Senecola worked as hard on John Henry's mind as they did his physical training. But I think probably um, one of the, after the stories that I'd heard how he was mistreated when he was young, and uh, I, my thoughts were to use a little psychology. I mean, horses aren't the smartest animals in the world, and let them know that we're, we're with him, and give him a lot of loving care and he will in turn revert the nastiness he had when he was young from what i understand into the competitability that he eventually had uh, we just gave him a lot of uh, uh, loving care and let him know that he was the best and he could do it, he could be the best and and he just progressively started getting better and better and better john henry resists the challenge and continues to lead in the stretch and it's three lengths Scarney in second, Rusty Canyon third, Leon Otis on the outside. It's John Henry in front by three lengths. It was John Henry's first California victory after a second place finish up north at Bay Meadows. His 1979 racing season was over. The new year and the new decade began with John Henry on a real roll. In 1980, he won his first six races, winning in California, Florida, and New York. The year would end at Santa Anita with one of Ron McAnally's favorite races of John Henry's, the Oak Tree Invitational. Uh, he weaved his way in between horses through the stretch and got up and, and one going away. I couldn't believe it. But the thoughts that went through my head that day was I went to the well once too often. I should not have run him. And about the time I, I thought that, here he came. John Henry switches to the inside and now takes over second. Balzac on the far outside. John Henry is rolling by on top. John Henry was now a star. He had earned just under a million dollars in 1980 with eight victories in 12 starts, along with three seconds and a third, and his first Eclipse Award as the Turf Champion. But in 1981, John Henry would become Horse of the Year. After winning his first four races of 1981 under Lafitte Pinkai Jr., John Henry would get another Hall of Fame rider. He got the shoe. Eleven times the legends teamed up, John Henry and Bill Shoemaker. They were quite a pair. Well, he probably was the most professional racehorse I've ever rode in my life, Chris. Uh, you know, time means everything in life, and uh, the way I got on him, Lafitte, got set down and I uh, happened to be there at the right time. Now, John Henry was about to make history as he arrived in Chicago for the first million dollar thoroughbred race ever run, the Budweiser Arlington Million. And they're off in the inaugural running of the Arlington Million. Match the hatch on the inside. Now it's Keita Content going right to the lead. Kilajaro second, the Bart between horses. Third, Super Moment down along the rail. Match the hatch. John Henry on the outside and Petit Tut. 
between horses seven John Henry. And now, looking back on the first Arlington Million, it had rained for three days. The turf was very soft. And he, Bill Shoemaker, sort of let him get into stride. He wasn't really getting a hold of the track, but Shoe, being the pro that he is, slowly, gradually let him get into stride and get his rhythm up. And by the time he was at the half mile pole, halfway through the race, you could see his rhythm starting. His head started bobbing up and down. Around the fire turn they go. The Bart racing strongly on the outside puts his head in front. Keita content down along the rail, second by three, Madam Gay. Losing ground now in third, match the hatch in fourth. John Henry and Rossi Gold. Here they come, spinning out of the turn. The, uh, the bar was in front, I think, in the stretch, and I came through a couple of horses and went around one, and we. Uh, I tried to catch it. The bar was trying to catch the bar. So. John Henry on the outside. The Burt down along the rail. Madam Gay. The Burt digs in under the whip. And the final move by John Henry. The Burt is still there. Can't split him. The Burt. Or is it John Henry on the outside? Officially, it was John Henry by a nose. Against all odds, the gelding nobody had wanted had won the first million dollar thoroughbred race in history. In his next two starts, John Henry would win two more photos. The Jockey Club Gold Cup in New York on the dirt by a head. And the Oak Tree Invitational by a neck. The only decision that wasn't close for the gelding was the voting for year-end championships. When the Eclipse Awards were announced, it was a John Henry landslide. Seven awards in all.